So in this video, we're going to learn about the orbit of the eye. So here we can see the bones which surround, um, which surround and contain the eyeball. The bones of the orbit um, have boundaries. The roof is made up of the frontal and your sphenoid bone. The medial boundary, which is closest to your nose, is made up of mainly the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid, and a small part of the sphenoid, which is here, actually. The inferior border of the orbit is mainly, um, is actually the roof of your maxillary sinus. It's made up mainly of the bones, maxilla, zygomatic, and palatine. So here's your maxilla, zygomatic, and your palatine bones. The lateral border is made up of the bones, uh, the zygomatic bone, and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Now these boundaries are significant because an orbital fracture can have some serious consequences. For example, the orbital fracture usually uh, occurs in the floor, so fractures usually occur on the floor of the orbit or the medial walls because they are the most weakest. The lateral wall is the strongest wall. Fractures of the floor, which is the inferior wall, may involve the maxillary sinus, causing sinusitis. Because remember, the floor of the orbit is also the roof of the maxillary sinus. And the roof of the maxillary sinus is not very strong. Okay, now let's zoom into the stuff inside the orbit here. The, um, and there are some important holes. Now, we learned about the bones around the area. Well, there are three important holes here. The superior orbital fissure, the inferior orbital fissure, and the optic foramen. Let us learn more about these holes, these three holes, and what structures pass through them. So here again are the three holes. This is the optic foramen, and two important structures pass through here. The optic nerve, cranial nerve number two, and the ophthalmic artery, which supplies the retina. The other hole is the superior orbital fissure. There are many structures that pass through here. Let us begin with the nerves first. There are branches of the ophthalmic nerve, which is a branch of cranial nerve 5, the V1 branch. You also have the trochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number 4. There is also the superior branch of the ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve 3. There is also the inferior branch of the ocular nerve, cranial nerve number 3. Then you also find the abducens nerve, cranial nerve number 6. These nerves are very important because they pass through the superior orbital fissure and they innervate the muscles responsible for moving your eyeball. Then you have an important vein called the superior ophthalmic vein. The third hole is the inferior orbital fissure, and two important structures pass through here, the inferior ophthalmic vein and the maxillary, vein, uh, the maxillary nerve, which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve. The maxillary nerve is the V2. Again, this here represents where the muscle, the tendons of the eyeball originates. And again, cranial nerve 3, the ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve 4, the trochlear nerve, and cranial nerve 6, the abducens nerve, supplies these muscles. They are mot motor nerves. Now let us look at the eyelid uh, when we blink, the eyelid. The eyelid is surrounded by muscles. It's composed of muscles. These muscles are innervated by nerves. So the trigeminal nerve, a cranial nerve 5, gives off the maxillary nerve branch, which is the V2, which has, a, which has another branch called the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve goes through the infraorbital foramen. So if you remember, the inferior orbital fissure here, we have a maxillary nerve off the trigeminal which passes the lower margin of the orbit and exits through the infraorbital foramen and becomes the infraorbital nerve. 
The infraorbital nerve supplies the inferior tarsus muscles, which are the muscles of the eyelid. The superior tarsus is supplied by branches of the supratrochlear nerve. Because we have an infraorbital nerve, which we talked about, we also have a supraorbital nerve, which is a branch of the ophthalmic nerve, V1, which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five, not the maxillary nerve. That is a mistake. So again, the ophthalmic nerve, V1, is a branch of the trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve number five. And funny story, maxillary nerve, which is a V2 is a branch of the trigeminal nerve as well. Anyway, another nerve is the lacrimal nerve, which supplies muscles of the lateral aspect of the eyelid. An important muscle to introduce now is the tendon of levator. This is of important clinical significance because a problem in this tendon can result in ptosis, which is drooping of the eyelid. So again, drawing the muscles of the eyelid, out, we have tendon of levator, palpebrae superioris, which is the proper long name. So tendon levator, palpebrae superioris. And we, all, we, are, and we are looking at the right eye in this diagram. So we have the lateral palpebrae muscles, the medial palpebrae, and the superior and inferior tarsus. So these are the muscles that make up the eyelid. Now, looking at some clinical things um, that that are important. Horner's syndrome is where we have a lesion which leads to a loss of sympathetic function in the head and this lesion can be due to cancer for example. Remember it is a problem with the sympathetic innervation and as a result we have three clinical signs of Horner's and these three are meiosis, ptosis and anhydrosis. Meiosis is where there is paralysis of the dilator uh, pupillary muscles so you cannot dilate your pupils. Ptosis is paralysis of the superior tarsus muscles, which results in the drooping of your eyelid. A problem with levato palpebrae superioris can also cause partial ptosis, but this tendon is not sympathetic innervated, but ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve number three innervated. I hope that made sense. Anhydrosis is loss of innervation to sweat glands, which means no sweating on the affected side. And in and Horner's, you can also be flushed, warm, with dry skin. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the eyelid and the orbit. Uh, thank you for watching.